Sony just announced the world's first full-frame mirrorless global shutter camera in the A9 Mark III, and they brought a bunch of us out to New York so that we could check it out just for a short period of time. I had my hands on it for about 21 hours, and what I wanted to do is really dig in and see what all the little extras are that they put in it. Sony has a habit of having kind of one headline feature that makes the camera special or whatever, but they've always got these little extras in there that make our lives easier as photographers and videographers. So in this video, I wanna talk about a bunch of those little extras that I found that have me really excited about what that means for the future of Sony cameras. So of course, the big highlight is the global shutter, which opens a lot of doors to other features like having 120 frames per second burst shooting speeds. But one of the cool features is that they've actually added the ability to shoot in a slower burst mode. So maybe you're shooting like 15 or 30 frames per second, and then you hit the new button on the front and it'll go into super overdrive and crank it up to 120. Now you've also got the ability to change what those settings are so you can go into the menus you can choose what your different burst speeds are depending on what mode you're in and then you can choose how fast it'll go when you hit that boost button. Now to go along with the super high speed burst shooting that we have in the A9 III they've also got something called pre-capture. So if you're not sure when that moment is going to happen you can half press the shutter button and it'll start buffering photos in a burst mode for up to one second before you actually press it down. So when you do actually take that shot, you'll get an extra bunch of photos before that moment, just in case by the time you actually pressed it, you missed it. This is great for things like wildlife and bird photography or sports photography for that moment because you don't know when that moment is going to happen exactly. So this way you never miss anything. Of course, not all of the updates can be super huge flagship mega exciting updates, but there are some quality of life things in here that make a difference. For example, there's a new folder structure for video files. Previously with any other Sony camera, if you wanna to get to your video files, you have to go to private, M4 root, and then clip. But they've taken out the private folder as far as getting to your video files, and they've put the M4 root folder at the top of the hierarchy of folders, so there's one less click to get in there. I know this isn't a huge thing, but as someone who has to go into the, all those folders every single time I need to grab footage, it does make a little bit of a difference to have one less click on the way there. Another really cool quality of life update is that they've added a function menu in the playback mode. So if you're looking through all of your photos, and just like checking them out and you wanna let's say rate it or rotate it or anything like that, now all you have to do is hit that function button and it'll come up with the same function menu that we've got in photo and video mode and you can completely customize it to have a bunch of different stuff in there that you wanted. Oh, that's quite interesting. Now, there are some things that we need to keep in mind with the new sensor. It's a whole new beast in the Sony sensor world having this global shutter. And one of the things that people might not know is that we've actually got a higher base ISO, both in photo and in video mode. So it's instead of 80 or 100, it's up to 250 in your regular mode. And then if you're shooting in S-Log3, it's now 2000. So your base ISO is gonna be a lot brighter. You're probably gonna wanna have some NDs on you to to make up for that. One of the coolest things that is just another quality of life thing that I really wasn't expecting here is that once you go into that function menu in the playback mode, you can actually add voice memos to your photos and your videos as far as I'm aware. So basically you go to the photo that you wanna leave a voice memo on and instead of rating it, you can actually record a voice memo into it. And when you go to pull your files off of your card afterwards, there's a little wave file with the same name as that photo or video. So you can leave yourself a little note if you need to during shoot day. There's also a new mode where it will shoot for noise reduction. So this is something that people have done for a long time, where you shoot a burst of photos and then you pull it into Photoshop and you can stack them in a certain way so it'll reduce the noise in the photo. But now it's built right into the camera where it will combine and do the raw photos in there for you. So you go in, you turn this on, and then you choose how many photos, up to 32, that you want it to shoot. Then when you hit the shutter button, it'll automatically 
batch shoot those 32 photos and combine them right there. So like I said, even though the global shutter is probably the most exciting thing for the A9 and what that means for future Sony cameras, there are a lot of other little things going on in that camera that hopefully we'll also see trickle down. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a comment down below, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. And Lee, next time. It is interesting. And, and Chris. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's interesting.